Ajime, welcome back to the Comic Book Dojo here on Comic Jutsu. JT McRoberts and I am your sensei of storytelling for today. And we're going to take a look at the fighting style of one Batman, the Caped Crusader, under the direction of the illustrious Neil Adams. Penciler, artist, creator extraordinaire. Written by Denny O'Neill. I've been looking forward to breaking down some DC superheroes for you guys. Make sure that you know this isn't just a Marvel-centric channel. And at some point we'll cover a lot of independence as well. But we've got to take it one step at a time. I'm excited to look at this issue of Batman, issue number 232. And uh, try to break down the fighting style of the, the one caped crusader. I dug up my old copies of Who's Who. The original run that came out in 1985 in addition to the update in 1987 to see what they say about the fighting styles of Batman and uh, it literally says Batman is a master of all forms of unarmed combat and man is that a blanket statement so whoever was writing the who's who's at the time just had no clue whatsoever about any form of martial arts and they just instead of checking individual boxes they just skipped to the one that said all he knows them all and honestly that is literally impossible i mean there are there are lifelong martial artists people who make a living at just studying and teaching and training martial arts and you know they've spent their life studying as many arts as possible people like dan Inosanto or what have you and even they have not studied every martial art in the world. I mean, that's insane because there are martial arts from everywhere, not just China or Japan, but you're also talking about um, India and the Philippines and all around the world, man. I was hopeful that I could find something uh, from Neil Adams himself about his, uh, his personal background in martial arts. And I had to look through several sources and eventually I found something in an issue of Back Issue Magazine in the uh, Martial Arts issue, which we have talked about a few different times. And this is, a, this is a great issue if you're into martial arts, and especially if you're a denizen of the comic book dojo, you will appreciate the various interviews and behind-the-scenes um, info on, on the various uh, martial arts characters within. And in, in this... Neil Adams is talking about uh, martial arts in the context of his character, Armor, which I am a huge fan of Armor. I just, I love the look of the character. And, uh, you know, obviously I'm a, I'm a big mark for martial arts characters in general. So uh, this is a fun little read through and definitely expect us to do a breakdown on Armor at some point in the future. Though I found this interesting because... He mentions that he got a lot of help from his son, Jason, on um, on creating the character, the martial arts character of Armor. His son, Jason, who he says studied movie martial arts or fake martial arts. And he goes on to break down the differences between movie martial arts, what, what looks good on the stage or screen, and real martial arts, which it doesn't look so good, which is quick and effective and you know, economic, something like the Bruce Lee, um, Green Hornet type fight scenes or, uh, you know, versus the, the wide flashier stuff that you'll see on the silver screen and uh, on television. There you see the classic Billy Jack cover by Adams there. And there's the Kung Fu cover featuring Kwai Chang Kang and a little appearance by Skate Man. So, Definitely recommend picking that issue up. Issue 105. And it's funny that Adams himself, he, he doesn't actually mention any kind of martial arts training. But he says he was qualified to tell these martial arts stories because he lived next door to Seraphim Caralexis. And I don't know if you're familiar with Seraphim Caralexis or not. But he was a producer in New York who helped bring in some of the earliest 
kung fu films in the 1970s. And, uh, you know, I recognize that name immediately from Way of the Black Dragon featuring Ron Van Cleef in that series of films. And I always remembered that name, Seraphim Care Alexis, but apparently because they were, he was living near him, um, Adams was able to do some classic martial arts and kung fu movie covers and one sheets. Um, my favorites being the mystery of chess boxing, and uh, there are a few others, but good, good stuff. But without further ado, let's see if we can pin down what kind of fighting arts we actually see from Batman in this particular issue. Now, at this time in his career, Neil Adams had bounced all around DC, and he made his way back to Batman here in this book. And this this particular story is all self-contained. This all happens in one slam-bang issue, and it's an absolute classic. Here you can see that I have the facsimile edition, which uh, if you're a denizen of the channel, you will know that I am a huge mark for facsimile editions. I just love the reprintings. And uh, they improved uh, some of the coloring in this. Um, it's a bit of an upgrade from the original printing, as best as I can tell. Now, I don't have another version of this, though. It might be in one of my graphic novels, one of those uh, the best Batman stories ever told. But this is a really good story. You know, Danny O'Neill is, uh, in my opinion, he was just a great plotter, a great storyteller. His dialogue would be a bit wonky and goofy at times, like as he got older and, you know, I suppose out of touch with younger lingo and much in the same way that Stan Lee's dialogue became kind of goofy and wonky. But as a, a storyteller, the guy was great at laying out plots and coming up with twists and turns. And this is just a great entrance, uh, just a great intro. Here you go. Right on the first page, you see Robin being shot. And Batman gets this, receives this letter. Here he is in his, uh, his lavish Gotham City penthouse. And it says, Dear Batman, we have Robin. Save him if you, if you can. So Batman decides to go back to the mansion. And he makes his way down into the Batcave. At this time, it, Batman was most associated by the public with the TV show. So it was very, very campy. So to see this kind of this dark, edgier Batman was really just a light year leap forward. And here you go, the introduction of Ross al Ghul. This is just great storytelling. You know, Batman just turns around and this guy's in his Batcave. And he says, you know, I figured out it was obvious that Batman had to be wealthy and he had to have certain kinds of equipment. And obviously it was you, Bruce Wayne. So Batman's like, yeah, that's right. I'm Bruce Wayne. And uh, Ross uh, kind of fools him here by saying, look, I received the same same type of message. My daughter Talia has been kidnapped and only you can help me, the great detective Batman. Talia introduced in an earlier issue in Detective Comics 411. Here it says, thanks to the editor note that we see there at the bottom. So they get they waste no time in getting this story off the ground. Take a little time here in when they travel across the world and we get a little bit of a flashback. Remember, everybody's... Well, every comic is somebody's first comic, so... You have to give them a little bit of backstory there. And I like this. I like that Adams and O'Neill show the different sides of Bruce Wayne that help make up Batman. You know, you see the intellectual side, the side that studied long hours in the lab. And then here they say equally long hours in the gym building his physical skills. So it's interesting to note that they don't actually pin down any type of particular style but they do go out of their way to establish Batman as a super athlete. I mean, he's probably, you know, like the 6'4 range, 235 pounds, just solid, rock solid muscle. Like an NFL player, you know, one of these super athletes, as, as we like to call them. And uh, you, you take martial training and wrap that into this very fast, very strong physical form. And you have a very capable hand-to-hand -hand combatant. 
Now, this is interesting here. You see, I like how in um, Nolan's um, Batman Begins, how he trained basically ninjutsu. So that's kind of a good catch-all. You know, they're a good, you know, 10, 15 arts wrapped up in ninjutsu. And uh, that also encompasses, you know, disguise and subterfuge and that sort of thing. So here you see Batman disguising himself. No mention of ninjutsu here, mind you. I'm just, you know, obviously I'm injecting that here into the page. But um, you see Batman uses his stick on these guys when they threaten him. And this is an interesting sequence right here. Right in this, this opening sequence, this opening fight maneuver, we see a whole lot of technique. This is very interesting. You see this uh, immobilization here on the hand where... Batman is defending himself against the stick attack, but then he's also uh, delivering a body blow to the solar plexus. So this is uh, very good stuff. Here I'll quickly show you in one of my boxing books by Edwin Hazlitt, one of the premier books on boxing. And you see the entry to infighting, the body blow, right there to the solar plexus. Or that nerve cluster, as Frank Miller would say. If you're playing the comic jutsu bingo game, Frank Miller, bing, bing. And here, this hand immobilization, there's a lot of technique there. This is, it could be something as simple as Batman is big and strong. And he's just, you know, he's just moving this guy's hand out of the way. But here on comic jutsu, we like to make it work. And because of the positioning of this, this actually looks like a bit of a a wrist lock, one that's common to jujitsu, aikido, um, the Chinese chinna. You'll see this in kali. You know, a wide variety of uh, martial arts, uh, hapkido. You know, so the basic grab being a gokyo, just kind of a transitional grab, something like that. But this is actually a wrist technique, turning the hand outwards. So a whole lot of technique there in that. If you're uh, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, watch some Steven Seagal movies and you'll see that movie, that move over and over again, the Kotagashi. You know, they combine it almost like an Akijutsu move where you do an immobilization that leads into a strike or vice versa, a strike that leads into an immobilization. But with comics always reading from left to right, we see this as the first maneuver opening up the strike to the body. So, good stuff. And then he just manhandles this guy. I mean, this is just pure... Batman being a giant super athlete, grabbing this little guy and just pinning him against the wall. I mean, no technique whatsoever in that. And this is interesting. This is like Bruce Lee type stuff here. So here he's confronted by a leopard leaping at him. And uh, they go to, uh, Denny O'Neill goes to great lengths to describe that Batman is getting out of the way of the claws here. You can see the the rear feet coming forward to try to scratch or disembowel Batman. So he explains all that here in the captions, which is a bit laborious to do that, but at least he's explaining it. So the reader understands, you know, how Batman is surviving this encounter in a hand to hand fashion. And here, this is, there's a little bit of technique in here. So this thing grabs a hold of his, uh, bites onto his arm. And uh, one of the things, one of the defense moves you learn against a bite is to actually feed the bite. So if you're bitten, you turn into it to feed into the bite so that the aggressor cannot bite down. Now, I don't recommend <laughs> attempting this technique with a leopard or a lion or any sort of big cat. I wouldn't even try it so much with my house cat. But I'm just saying that is a legitimate bit of a technique if you feed into the bite. It, they're not able to uh, gain purchase and bite all the way through. And this is an interesting choice here. He act, Batman actually goes to what looks like a, a closed guard technique. You know, if you're familiar with modern MMA and the, the UFC, that sort of stuff. Here you see the, uh, the closed guard, as one might see in jujitsu. So maybe Batman has some jujitsu here. You know, these uh, immobilizations and... Wrist holds, that's traditional jiu-jitsu. Guard techniques, that's traditional jiu-jitsu. Here he is feeding the bite. And uh, he explains that he just 
uses his strength to bend the uh, leopard's head back and break its neck. So that's what's happening there. So very interesting little fight there between man and beast. Letters to the Batman. I just I love these facsimile editions. Have I said that enough? Just fantastic artwork here from Neil Adams and inker Dick Giordano. Phenomenal storytelling. It moves at a great clip. Here we go. Sniper gets the drop on Batman. Batman uses subterfuge. Again, a little bit of that ninjutsu, perhaps. Okay, so now mind you, no styles are named in this. We're just pointing out what we see here. Okay, and of course, ninjutsu has been retrofitted into Batman, at, you know, here in the modern era. So Batman comes up behind the guy, gets him with what's close to an ankle pick, but actually turns into a, more of a single leg pickup just to get the guy off balance. And then boom, finishes him off with a straight left. <laughs> Just classic boxing there. But nice little wrestling move. Moving into boxing. So Batman is, is brilliant at combining the various arts. And this shows a lot of uh, a lot of range. You know, boxers don't know ankle picks. They don't know these single leg pickups. You know, and vice versa. Um, wrestlers don't know good uh, straight crosses, you know. Now, here's where the dialogue is just a bit wonk wonky. Can it, Sonny Boys? You don't dare use that thing, as we both know. So, the, yeah, this is some painful dialogue here, but it's great storytelling all around. Makes his way in, discovers Robin. He's confronted by their supreme brother here. And here they have... Uh, Batman gets gets Robin free. They have a little fight here. You see a nice little uh, circle throw. This is classic judo or jujitsu there. We can show you quickly. We've talked about the circle throw before. Tomonagi. Foot on the hip. Pull him forward. Throw him over you. There you go. Foot on the hip. Pull him forward. Throw him over you. We see Batman just diving in. See, right cross, at the same time, he goes for a collar grab. So you've got a um, immobilization on the clothing. And I like this. This leads into a combination maneuver, okay? So he goes from, from the punch to completing this as a throw. And it is actually very similar to the Tayatoshi body drop throw. Here you can see the collar grab, if you can see that. And bloop, off balance your opponent using their momentum, pulling them forward. Same thing Batman does. He's got the collar grab, pulls him forward, except he uses this guy as a weapon. Now, mind you, this might just be Batman is a huge guy that is <laughs> yeah, superhumanly strong almost and uh, a beyond an Olympic level athlete as they have him described. But we like infusing technique into this stuff because he is a master of all forms of unarmed combat. So uh, this is nice. So he goes with this throw and then he comes back with uh, what, what would easily be a spinning back fist or spinning bottom fist. So you might see this in classic uh, karate or uh, Muay Thai or something to that fit effect. Uh, spinning back knuckle, spinning bottom fist. Catch this guy. And there he confronts the uh, the big bruiser bodyguard. You know, just like in the James Bond movies, how they always have the the big bad guy has the, the, the strong guy that works for him. You know, that's what this guy is, this uhu guy here. You see more boxing here from Batman. See, he ducks under the punch. He's bobbing and weaving. Weaves this way, bobs that way. Boom, comes back with another body blow. Follows it up with a nice left uppercut. This is actually classic boxing here. So good boxing technique from Batman. And finishes them off with the right hook. So that is a, a classic combo. Bob and weave, body blow, uppercut, left hook for the finish. Or right hook for the finish, excuse me. 
And there you go. Now, Ra's al Ghul reveals that he's behind everything, and Talia is his daughter, and this was all a test to find a worthy successor. Dun dun! So there you have it. That is Batman's fighting style broken down for you bit by bit as presented in Batman with Robin the Teen Wonder, number 232, right here on the comic book dojo. Thanks for following along. We'll see you again with more Batman breakdowns, more DC breakdowns, and very soon we'll have some indie breakdowns coming your way. Like the video, leave some comments. If there are uh, specific issues you'd like to see broken down, I'd love to hear it. Follow me on social media. All those links are down below. Thanks for watching, citizens. Superior! Mate. Oh, my God.